Jessica. Well, I was born in Lagos, so I'm an original Lagosian. I grew up in the East, in Enugu. I'm from Onetcha, and I've lived in Abuja, Lagos, London, and I grew up here, went to school here, moved to the UK when I was about nine years old, Stayed, went to school there, came back here. I've been back in Nigeria now 26 years, so I moved back in 1990, and um, yeah, that's it. Well, I think when we started doing what we were doing, I wouldn't even say there was an entertainment industry per se. Like a lot of things in this country, it was being taken as vocation. And I'm talking 25 years ago. I'm talking even 30 years ago. You know, I mean, people like Jimmy Jad, who I've known since 1986, that's 30 years. There wasn't, you know, it wasn't an industry. Frankly, we were just hustling. We were promoters. You know, you're promoting events, you're promoting parties, and you're beginning to try to find an identity for your people. And I guess my thing was, as a teenager, I was set heavily into hip hop. I'm a hip hop generation guy. The first private TV station is Clapper Board in 1992. You know, I was a kid then, but I was fortunate to have, I think I created the first two shows with partners that went on to that show. And that's a long time ago now, you know? So everything we did really hadn't been done. <laughs> so it's always, I mean, it's nice to be first in business sometimes, but it's not always good because sometimes you're so far ahead of the curve that by the time everybody else catches up, you've moved on and they are the ones who are gonna sort of start making money. And, and I've seen that a number of times in the sector. It's show business. The first thing you do in show business is you need to validate the show before you get to the business. Because if you don't validate the show, if people don't feel there's value either in the music, the production, the performance, whether it's stand-up comedy, Nollywood or music or live performance, they're not gonna wanna pay for it. And if you go back 10, 15 years ago, Nigerians didn't really value our own. We didn't value our content, our comedians, our actors, our actresses. And I like to think that we had some impact in terms of creating value behind that word Nigeria, Niger, 100%, you know, represent, just make sure. So like I just leave here now, we dominate the continent, right? So it's our music, it's our comedians, it's our fashion, it's our food. And some of us saw that 12 years ago that this was possible. Of course, we were laughed at. We were told we were mad. Social Media Week Lagos is unparalleled in this country. Nigerians are not very good at sharing. We don't share our privy information very well. But at Social Media Week Lagos, everybody forgets all that and they come there and they share. And I think there's a lot of learning, there's a lot of opportunity. I mean, we've achieved well over a billion mentions in social media over four years. I mean, 800 million in 2016 alone. So you know that you know, there isn't an event or a conference on this continent that has that power, has that reach. And that's something that we're very proud of, okay? If we were sitting in a country this size, in any other market, you would be having a number of billion dollar media corporations. And literally, there are none. There are, there are a number of them operating here, but there are none that are being built locally. And it's a, it's a combination of factors um, of a lack of support from private equity, from private finance, some very, very strong pioneer businessmen have pushed out, you know, I don't need to mention the names, but in the area of broadcast specifically. But in terms of the content industry, the music industry, the Nollywood industries, it's still emerging. And until the emergence of more, some of the more um, formalized players, like Film House and the rest, you, you know, then you begin to see the structure. And then banks, who unfortunately, I mean, I'm really happy that you guys are doing this, but. Most of the banks here have been pretty lazy about how do you finance content, which is really the conversation. We live in the age of convergence, okay, where, you know, the content provider can engage the content platform and miss out any third party, yeah? So you yourself become the content hub from your own platform and engage into social or digital or online, which gives you immediate access to billions of people. Now, if you can find your way through all those billions of people to make sure that your brand stands out and they begin to engage you and you make money, that's the trick. That's the marketing. But that's where the opportunity lies. Well, I, the first things first is know who you are, know what you're about, and know what you're trying to do, right? I'll give you an example. Uh, when we were running our record label, Storm Records, maybe in the last 10 years ago, so it hasn't really operated for five years, but just to give you an example, the brand is so strong that until today, people will ask me, what's happening with Storm? And I'm like, well, <laughs> no releases since 2011 should tell you that we're not releasing content, right? But, you know, on every platform in every country on this continent for the last decade, we've had content running every single day. 
because we activated most of these platforms. We pushed the content into South Africa, Kenya, all these places. And that's one of the things that is possible. But the thing about it, like, just like I tell artists, right, if you look at the entertainment industry, there's, there's behind the camera and there's in front of the camera. So the, the guys who are the talents that you see, that the fan sees, are a very small aspect of the industry. But they're the, they're the celebrities, which is great. And you know, you need them. Without them, the other people in the value chain cannot eat. So we've created a bunch of stars. We need to create more sustainable platforms for those stars. We need more touring opportunities. So I mean, Whiskey should be able to do a national tour in Nigeria and hit 35 stadiums and sell them all out. But the first thing and the most important thing is hard work. Nothing's happening overnight. So you better get ready to work hard. Because if you're not hustling harder than the next guy, you have no opportunity. Let's imagine it like this, that there's 100 people, everybody has the same level of talent, everybody has the same level of education, but one guy is working harder than 100. Who do you think is gonna be successful? You know it's the guy who's working hardest, right? So hard work, humility, good manners, integrity, loyalty. These are the key human elements. If you keep these together with you, and you've got talent, creative talent, that enables you to express, then you can find people who believe in your talent. It's your integrity that actually makes you a star, okay? Personality is only part of the process. Your integrity is what will make your manager believe in you, is what will make a financier support you. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with entrepreneurship or business. I think that if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to be prepared to take risks. You have to understand the, the nature of those risks, yeah? You have to be prepared to take responsibility. But you have to understand the nature of that responsibility. And you also have to be prepared to learn every day. And thank God there's free education everywhere for everybody. Online everywhere. People can get so much information. They can get so much knowledge. So to me, there's no excuse for not knowing anymore. It's like almost like if you didn't know, Google it, put it on Wikipedia, put it somewhere and have a basic position to hold from and from there you can actually do your stuff. So I mean for me, I'm always geared towards young people. We have a country with a population of 50-60% about 16 years old, maybe 80% under 30. It's a young person's country, you know, and they really own the future. But the thing I always tell young people is don't be sitting there waiting for it, you have to take it. If you're waiting for me to give it to you, it's not going to happen. If you're waiting for your father to give it to you, it's not going to happen. But for you to take it, you have to prepare yourself. If you just wake up, and you just wake up in the morning, I'm going to take it, you're not going to be successful. So you better be, find somebody to mentor you, somebody you're going to work with. Even if it's you don't want to do a nine to five job, you need to have experience. You need to have practical, tangible experience that convinces everybody that you know what you're talking about and what you're doing.